Let's solve the sixth problem based on convolution. In this problem, we need to find signal zt which is equal to convolution of signal xt with signal yt. You can see the waveform of signal xt. It is having two rectangular pulses. The first rectangular pulse is from 0 to t by 2 and having the positive amplitude a. On the other hand, the second rectangular pulse is from t by 2 to t having the negative amplitude minus a. So we can write signal xt as the sum of two signals, let's say pt plus qt, where pt is the signal having only positive peak rectangular pulse and qt is the signal having this negative rectangle qt. So xt is summation of pt and qt. Now we will focus on our second signal yt. It is also a signal having the rectangular pulse but this time we only have one rectangular pulse having the positive amplitude a and if you compare this rectangular pulse with pt you will find they are same. So yt is exactly same as pt. qt is having only one difference as compared to yt. yt is having the positive amplitude a, qt is having the negative amplitude a. So yt is equal to negative of qt. So this is what we have and we are required to find out xt convolution yt. We have the shortcut to find out the convoluted result when two rectangular pulses are convoluted. If the width of two rectangular pulses are same, we will get a triangle and when the width is different, we will get a trapezoid. So here if you see yt, pt and qt, you will find the three waveforms are having the same width. So we will get a triangle. But convoluting xt directly with yt will be a little bit difficult as compared to convoluting yt with pt first and then convoluting it with qt and then finally adding the result of two convolutions. This means zt is equal to xt convolution yt. I can write xt as pt plus qt. pt plus qt and then they are convoluted with yt. We can use the distributive law and it will give us pt convolution with yt plus qt convolution with yt. So we need to first find out pt convolution yt and then qt convolution yt and then we will add them to get our signal zt and we already know this convolution will give us a triangle and this convolution will also give us a triangle. So finally we will have two triangles and adding them we will have zt. So let's focus on pt convolution yt. We will first plot the waveform of pt convolution yt. We know we are going to get a triangle and the range in which our triangle will exist is from 0 plus 0 which is 0 to t by 2 plus t by 2. t by 2 plus t by 2 is equal to t. So our triangle will exist from 0 to t. Now what will be the amplitude of our triangle? The amplitude is equal to a multiplied to a multiplied to t by 2. Very simple. The amplitude of the triangle is equal to the amplitude of the first signal which is a in this case multiplied to the amplitude of the second signal which is again a multiplied to the time duration in which the signal is non-zero or you can say the width of rectangle. In this case the width is same and it is equal to t over 2. So the amplitude is equal to a square t by 2. Let's say somewhere here we are going to get a square t by 2. Now you will ask me why I have marked a square t by 2 at this point only. Why not here? Why not here? Because we already know the amplitude or the peak will exist exactly after t by 2 from 0. The 0 is the starting point and exactly after t by 2 which is this instant of time we will have the amplitude. So we have all the required points to draw the triangle. It will look like this. So we have obtained the first convolution. Now we will move on to the second convolution. 
the range in which our triangle will exist is from t by 2 plus 0 to t plus t by 2. To understand this, focus on signal qt. This is the waveform of signal qt and it is non-zero from t by 2 to t. So we will add t by 2 to 0 because signal y t is non-zero from 0 to t by 2. So t by 2 plus 0 will give us t by 2 and then we will add t plus t by 2 which will give us 3t by 2. So this is 3t by 2. So our signal will be non-zero from t by 2 to 3t by 2 and it will be a triangle. So let's quickly plot in the waveform. We already know the amplitude is going to be minus a square t by 2 because this is the amplitude of the first signal minus a minus a multiplied to a multiplied to t by 2. So in this way we have minus a square t by 2 and uh, we already know why we are taking t by 2. I am not going to explain everything in detail because I have already explained this method in great detail and we have also solved few examples based on it. But for revision purpose I will explain what is t by 2. t by 2 is the smaller width is the smaller width. When you are having two rectangular pulses you have to select the smaller width but in this case the rectangular pulses are having the same width which is equal to t by 2. So the amplitude is equal to minus a square t by 2 and we will have the amplitude when t is equal to t. So let's join all the points and we will have the result of convolution when you convolute qt and yt. So in this way we have our second convolution and now we will add the two waveforms to get signal zt. From 0 to t by 2 the first convolution is having the waveform like this and from 0 to t by 2 the second convolution is equal to 0. So 0 plus this is equal to this only. So we will have the waveform like this and the amplitude here is equal to a square t by 2 a square t by 2. Now from t by 2 to t the waveform of first convolution is like this and from t by 2 to the waveform of the second convolution is like this. They are having the same slope and when t is equal to t by 2 the second convolution is equal to 0 but the first convolution is equal to a square t by 2. So this will be the first point and then when t is equal to t, the second convolution is equal to minus a square t by 2 and the first convolution is equal to 0. So when t is equal to t, we will have the sum as minus a square t by 2. I hope you understand how we have obtained these two points and now we will join these two points to get the waveform from t by 2 to t. Now from t to 3t by 2 the first convolution is equal to 0 and the second convolution is having the waveform like this. So we will get the same waveform as the second convolution. So this is how the waveform of signal zt looks and this was our problem. We had to find signal zt. So I hope you now understand how to use the shortcut to directly obtain the waveform when you are convoluting two rectangular pulses, when you have the same width of the rectangle, the result is going to be triangle and when you have the different widths, you will get a trapezoid. So this is all. If you have any doubt, you may ask in the comment section. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.